Hello everyone, I'm John Rom. This is my trainer Spencer Tatum and we're gonna go today through one of my favorite warm-ups. I do it before every round, I do it almost every day and it consists of basically warming up your core and glutes, you know, the, the king and queen muscles and the golf swing and uh, uh, those days that we're all at home sitting down a lot is the first two that are gonna go. So getting your core, your abs activated is gonna be very, very important. So he's gonna guide me through it and explain to you guys what we're doing and uh, I'm gonna give you my personal input of what I feel see if it helps out. The one thing you will need uh, is an iron. Try to get a long iron. I have uh, five iron here and uh, you're gonna be using it throughout the whole exercise. So this, this warm-up right here helps us not only to help John with his mobility stability but also prepare him to, to play. And we can also use it as a strength warm-up on the road too. So if you're at home, if you're sitting around, like a lot of times you do really tight hip flexors, mm -hmm. playing a little Xbox. I know somebody <laughs> likes to do that. Um, but on the other side, it's kind of get everything back aligned before you get back, swing your golf club, or you get back in training session. So we're gonna take you through it. So we're start with John's gonna lay down his back. Um, as you see, he's got his five iron golf club, and what he's really trying to feel is that pelvic tilt. So he's really pushing the ground. He's gonna take the club and apply a little bit of pressure to hold this core and hold it lock in. So he's gonna breathe in, and he's gonna push one down the whole time he's holding that midline as he's coming back up. So we're working stability right here of the core, but we're also working mobility of the hips. So John's gonna demonstrate about three reps here. And as you can see, he's really focused on pushing that club, keeping pressure in the upper body and the lower, in the lower body and maintaining that stability. So after we kind of get this going, he's gonna move to a bridge. So it's a core activation bridge, still using his five iron. Same concepts apply. He's gonna try to hold that midline, create that pressure our feet forward system is a breathing, he's a bridge up, he's really focusing on extending that hip. I know a lot of us are gonna wanna low, arch that low back, right? Mm -hmm. Make sure you're really holding it here, you're driving to the ground, extend that hip. So John's gonna do three reps. Notice the pressure is breathing, he's breathing out of top, breathing in, hold it, and then breathe in. So he's really working single leg strength on the lower leg and mobility of the hip, and he's working core stability up top. So now we're gonna move, now we're gonna start getting a little more T-spine mobility. So John's gonna start right here. He's gonna move right to left, feet are gonna go opposite of the club. He's gonna come back, he's really focused on that separation. Okay, how far can he go each way? And he's trying not to let that back arch. So he's trying to keep those knees in line with the hips. And he's trying to breathe out, breathe in, hold the breath and transition, breathing back out. We really like this in creating a separation for his golf swing, mobilizing his T-spine and getting ready to go. This, this could actually be my favorite exercise. Uh, very important to be focused on the timing of things. So you try to have your legs get to the limit at the same time as your claw where you're provided to get into the limit. If you go without sequence, it's kind of going to look like this and you're not going to be working very well on what we're trying to accomplish. So it's also going to help you with timing and sequencing on your golf swing. A little dissociation. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So now. Oh, followed by. Huh? Followed by this one. Followed by this one. Now this I don't right, like it, by the way. <laughs> this right here really helps him lock his midline in. The one thing we don't want is that reverse spine angle mm -hmm. or the early extension. So John's going to really focus creating pressure mm -hmm. with his top hand with his lat. He's really pushing down right here and compressing the lower leg, breathe it in, and he's trying to get as long as he can without losing that midline. So does it come in, breathe in, and breathe out. I should be able to touch right here and he shouldn't be able to lose it. So notice the pressure he's putting into. It's a lot of pressure, really working that compression force as we work and we're at impact. It's, uh, it's very important to keep that pressure. You know, if you lose it, this arm is gonna get loose. You might arch your back. If you keep this pressure continuously going throughout the whole exercise, it's very hard to arch it. Mm -hmm. Especially if you use that hip and push into the hand. So now we'll do the other side, just so we're balanced out. <laughs> and we're doing three to five reps here. So you can do three to five reps, and what you're really trying to get that feel. So notice how he's coming in, coming back, coming in, coming back, really keeping that everything locked up. And he's thinking about he's compressing the opposite shoulder mm -hmm. to the opposite hip. Exactly. So, okay, so now we're gonna move a little bit more in our straight leg setups. There we go. So boom, really working, rolling. Think about we're going down, click, click, click down the vertebrae and click, click, click on the way up. Try to keep those arms above your head at all times. I'm impulsing a little bit. The stronger you are, the easier it would be. So essentially, just try to keep them straight without really you know, abusing your arms to get up. It's, uh, it's gonna be a really good way to get that up connection again and really make it work and warm up. And really prepare you for hip hinging, which is important yep. for the setup. Exactly. So you do. We usually do 
somewhere between eight or ten, whenever you feel you're warmed up, you get to that point. Good. So now we're gonna start working up the chain, right? So you notice how we start on the back, just like how we learned how to move, we're warming up in that same process. We're starting on the back, we're moving the arms and limbs, we started compressing midline, which is like our crawling pattern, and now we're gonna half kneeling transition period. Yeah, so in this exercise, you basically start by relaxing back in your hip, right? Uh, put a little bit of pressure down on the club, and then you basically drive through and try to extend that hip, create this, this middle line, balance on the right hip, and just make sure it works. If you do it properly, you should feel a stretch on the hip while you're pressing down on the club, and you will feel that connection, basically from your right shoulder all the way down to your right knee. Mm -hmm. And then you relax and keep that pressure on. Do it for maybe two seconds, maybe like five reps each side, and that should be enough. Now notice how we're working on what we call the rack and stack, right? John's racking it up and he's stacking it straight up. The one thing we don't want to see is for him to be wee and be back here. <laughs> Again, and all the previous warm up is going to help, right? If you have all your core activated and working properly, you're not going to lose your back. Your abs are going to stay in there and make you just, you know, feel like a straight plank. Yep. So do three do more right here. More. And notice he's creating that when he comes up, he's, he's pushing down first, and then he's driving that hip through, really getting that nice stack You will feeling. feel, it's pretty similar to the dead bug, honestly. If you do it one-handed, it'll be a very similar feel to that with your pressure down through your arm and just feel the same connection. Right. So now we've worked in a transitional period, now we're going to standing, right? Exactly. Single leg stance, I'd say it's a little important. Yeah. So now, RDLs, uh, not my favorite exercise. This is gonna be, it's hard to keep balance throughout doing them for most people. Uh, I struggle if I don't warm up properly or if I don't do anything for a week. Yeah. So basically you try to keep your arm extended, keep that pressure, put your toes, your toes up, keep that pressure between the legs, between the leg and the arm, and basically do a normal RDL. Try to go to parallel if you can. If you can, whatever you get to, but never lose that, pla never lose that, that pressure between your arm and your leg. Maybe John becomes a coach in his next profession. <laughs> Highly doubt it. But you notice he's really working those feet. So when you think of that bottom foot, when you're going down, you're gripping those toes in the ground to anchor that foot down. This will help their sway and slide in our golf swing. Whoops, see, that right leg is usually my nemesis. And we're also really working on loading that right and left hip, really. Can you get right here as we're transitioning, bang, right here so we can snap it and drive the ball. Now, I also understand, you know, not everybody works out every day and not everybody is used to have the stability. Just work on it. If you fall a couple times, don't worry about it. Just try to work on it and feel how your body is warming up. Uh, and don't worry too much about the RDLs if you can't do it, just because it is a little bit more technical. So mm -hmm. you just work up, up to it. Because now we have all the joints involved, right? So now it's a higher level pattern, right? So the last thing we're going to work on is a little two-legged hip hinge to get us ready to swing the golf club. So for people that know, it's almost like preset to a deadlift. <laughs> but try to keep your elbows open, not close like this. Try to keep them open and try to keep the club touching your body as much as possible, and just hinge. And what we're, what we're looking for is can John keep his head, shoulder blades, and glutes all connected to the club as he's putting force in the ground and loading those hips. Now notice how his shin angle is staying nice and vertical. He's not going backwards where he's losing power. He's not going too much farther in that squat. Now this is a challenging pattern. It looks simple, but it's way more challenging than you think. Try, try switching hands as well. And I would say as soon as you feel the club leaving your body, so like you see if I start bending my upper body without hinging, you'll see the bottom of the club and the grip will not be touching my, my spine. That's, you're already wrong. So try mm -hmm. to keep that butt pushing as much as possible until you feel the separation and then is when you stop. But John, how important is the breath when you do this, when you're breathing? It's important to keep that tempo, right? So uh, you probably explained it better than I can, but just being able to breathe throughout it so you don't gas out, especially also in the golf swing, just having the proper breath at the right time. You know, you're not gonna hit the ball while you're inhaling. So <laughs> you, you, kinda, you kinda need to work on that as well. So basically, you hold your breath while you're doing, basically you inhale and you hold your breath while you're doing the challenging part, right? And then when you basically need to explode, is when you, uh, when you exhale. So easy way to think about this, breathe in for stability, holding that breath in transitional periods and breathing out when you're getting mobility and power. So he's breathing in, holding that breath, breathing out, hard exhale up top. 
So very simple warm up. Mm -hmm. You just need a fire iron, a mat if you have a hard ground or hard surface, and I think it kind of gets you ready to go. Yeah, it's uh, it's something everybody can do now that you're at home every day, uh, especially if we're sitting down a lot like mm -hmm. most of us are. So you, you can't really do anything. Uh, it's gonna work out to at least not give you some back pain and uh, and avoid that and just you know get some of the muscles working properly. Yeah, and if you find in one area, we're normally looking at three to five reps on each side of each leg or three to five reps on each movement. If you find that, hey, you know what, after the three to five, I don't really feel like I got it, do two or three more until you feel it. And if you feel like it's easy, it's no problem, do three and then just move on. It's more about the feeling and the quality of movement than the amount of volume. And you can do this two to three times a day or one time a day, and you'll see a major improvement in your mobility, stability, and it'll hopefully translate into swinging a better golf swing. Anything else? No, that's it. I would say try to stay positive, stay at home, wash your hands, and let's uh, let's so we can get through this with positive attitude and you know improve your golf game. All right, this is John Spencer Tatum, THP. We'll see you soon.